mighty Lord, for your loving kindness, mighty Lord, for your goodness upon our lives, Lord. We have returned to give you all the praise. We have returned to say we are grateful. Daddy, receive all the praise, Lord. Receive adoration. We magnify your name, Lord. No one else can compare unto you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy and your goodness upon our lives, mighty Lord. Daddy, we give you all the praise. We give you adoration. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We are going to pray for God's presence. Let's, go be, let's open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews 12, verse 22. But you have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to all innumerable company of angels. We are going before the Lord and pray. Lord, let your presence be evidence in our midst this evening. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask that you may honor us with your presence, Lord. Lord, it is your presence that makes the difference, mighty Lord. Father, let your presence be evidence in our midst this evening, mighty Lord. Honor us with your presence, mighty Lord. Lord, we pray that you may honor us with your presence. It is your presence that makes the difference, Lord. Father, we ask that you may honor us with your presence. Daddy, we want to bless you, Lord. Father, overshadow us with your presence, mighty Lord. Daddy, overshadow us with your presence, mighty Lord. Daddy, we worship you. We give you all the praise. We glorify your name. We give you all the praise. We give you adoration. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Let's, we are going to pray for the word of God. Let's open our books, our Bibles in the book of Psalms 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. We are going before the Lord and pray. Lord, send us your word this evening. That word that will take me to the next phase of my life, Lord. Father, send me that word. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray that you may send me a definite word. Lord, that word that will take me to the next level of my life, Lord. Lord, that seasonable word that you have for me this evening, Lord. Father, I pray that you may send it my way, mighty Lord. Father, speak to me, mighty Lord. Father, I pray that you may send your definite word, mighty Lord. Father, I pray that you may send your definite word. Lord, send us a seasonal word, mighty Lord. Father, cause me to love this, this month, mighty Lord. Daddy, we worship you. We give you all the praise. We give you adoration. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, we are free. We are going to commit God's servant in the hands of God. Father, use your servant afresh. Anoint him. Give him fresh action to function. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we commit your servant into your hands, Lord. Anoint him afresh, Lord. Release a fresh anointing upon your servant. The unction to function, mighty Lord. Father, give her utterance, mighty Lord. As she stands to speak, mighty Lord. Father, we ask that you may give her utterance, mighty Lord. Anoint the vessel you are set to use this night, mighty Lord. Father, give her unction to function, mighty Lord. Daddy, we want to appreciate you. We want to give you all the praise. We give you adoration. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Lastly, we are going to ask for multitudes. Lord, draw your people from far and near, Lord. Father, draw them to our dominion service this evening. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we call for multitudes, mighty Lord. As many you have ordained to be in our service this evening, Lord. Father, draw them nigh by your blood, mighty Lord. From every corner, mighty Lord. Online and actual, Lord. Father, draw your people nigh, mighty Lord. Daddy, draw your people nigh, mighty Lord. Father, take away every obstacle on their way, mighty Lord, and draw them nigh, mighty Lord. Bring your people, mighty Lord, from far and near, Lord. Father, we bless you, we appreciate you, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we are free. Let's go before him and appreciate him because he has heard us. Father, we thank you, we appreciate you, we give you all the praise, we give you adoration, we thank you, we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we are free. We can take our seats and go through our prayer bulletin as we intercede.
Jesus. Thank you, mighty Lord. Praise you, Lord. 
for what you have done for me, but for who you are. You are the song that I sing, melody in my heart. The reason I live is to praise you, Lord.
his holy name for tonight for gathering us before him tonight we give you glory father we say thank you we glorify your holy name father for giving us another privilege to appear before you we return to bless your holy name papa receive all praise receive honor receive adoration thank you mighty king and it is in the name of jesus that we give thanks covenant keeping god once again we give you glory we give you honor we give you adoration for giving us another privilege to appear before you, we say thank you. Lord, as we have appeared before you, Lord, we ask you to bless our lives. Father, cause us to life, to love. As we live here tonight, put laughter in our mouths. Do all this to the glory and honor of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord God. Realms of possibilities. I am walking in it. Amen. On behalf of God and his servant, I welcome you all to our dominion service of tonight. Those that are joining us online and on our YouTube page, you are most welcome as well. Wherever you are, feel at home. Amen. We are still in our month of my laughter is here. All shall laugh with me. I don't know about you, all shall laugh with me. Amen. Amen. And as a way of welcoming ourselves to this very service of tonight, I want us to open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 18 and verse number 10. I'll read up to verse number 14. And the verse 10, the Bible says, And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son, and Sarah had it in the tent door which was behind him. Verse 11, Now Abraham and Sarah were old, and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah loved within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also and the lord said unto abraham wherefore did sarah laugh saying shall i of surely bear a child which am old and verse 14 the bible says is anything too hard for the lord at the time appointed i will return unto thee according to the time of life and sarah shall have a son in verse 10 if you allow me to repeat, the Bible says, And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door which was behind him. Just return me to verse 10, please. I'll certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah thy wife shall have a son. From this very scripture, God marked Sarah for laughter. He said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, not according to the time of death. According to the time of life, I will return to thee, and Sarah shall have a son. He marked Sarah that there is a particular time she will love. A particular time she, I mean, God will put laughter in her mouth at the time of life. And going to verse 14, after Sarah doubted what God said, verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed I will return unto thee there is an appointed time for every one of you Amen. once God has earmarked you for blessing once God has earmarked you for laughter there is an appointed time that you must laugh whether the enemy likes it or not Amen. there is an appointed time for every child of God whatever you are looking for just have faith that there is an appointed time for you. There's an adage that they say that uh, every thread has its tailor. You see, you can look at a color, you look at indigo, and you say, who will use color indigo? 
there is a tailor that is looking for color indigo. You look at violet, you say, who can wear a, a violet cloth? There is a tailor looking for violet. Uh, there is an appointed time for every one of us. Uh, you have looked at yourself just like Sarah said, I am too old. Who can marry me? There is a man that is looking for exactly that age, exactly that color, exactly that shape. So don't doubt God. Just wait for the appointed time. You have been in, I mean, employed for so long. Uh, there's somebody that will just come and he says, even if you don't have papers, I have just like the way you are, come and work with me. Because an appointed time that God marks for you has arrived. So just ask God, Father, let my appointed time come. Hallelujah. Every one of us, we have been earmarked by God. There is something that has been making you to cry. That thing God has earmarked you when your time will come and you will surely love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want us to talk to God in one minute in this service and tell him, Father, Lord, speed up my appointed time. Speed up my appointed time. Time that you have marked for me to love. Go before the Lord God and talk to him and ask him, Father, speed up my appointed time. Father, my time that has been earmarked for me to love. Father, speed it up. Speed it up, Lord. Father, speed up my appointed time. My appointed time. There's something that you know that you want God to do for you. Tell him to speed it up. Tell God that thing that has been making you to cry. Father, speed it up. Speed it up, Lord. Speed up my appointed time. Whatever has been making me to cry. Father, speed it up. Father, let laughter come faster in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty King. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray and believe. Can somebody put his hand together for the Lord God if you know your appointed time is coming? Put your hands together some more for the Lord. Hallelujah. Realms of possibilities. I'm walking in it. Hallelujah. It is time to take our offering. It is offering time. It is time to bless the Lord with our whole substance. Hallelujah. And before we do that, let us observe scripture in the book of James chapter 1, verse 22 and 25. The Bible says, now says first. Okay. Uh, before we take the offering, let us listen to the following announcement for the remaining part of the week. Uh, breakthrough Home Sales Fellowship continues this coming Saturday. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Kindly locate to the nearest home cell close to you. Join us in the countdown to our annual Women Arise Convention. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Join us in the countdown to the, our annual Women Arise Convention scheduled for 26th to 30th of July 2023. And this team, the refiners, fire. All are almost welcome. Join us uh, this coming Sunday in our two power pack service, worship services. The first service is English, which is started at 7.30 a.m. Our second service is English, translated to Kiswahili. Time is 9.30 a.m. East Afghan time. DISOM, that is Dominion School of Ministry, commences online Bible classes for foundation certificate course from August 2023. Classes will all on Zoom platform. Monday to Friday is the time is from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. East Afghan time. Kindly pick your form from the church office. The school is open to all. Non-PCI members can also pick their forms also. Kindly inform your friends, colleagues and neighbors, etc. The evidence of the life of Christ in you is turning men and women to Christ. Therefore, go forth and function as Minister of Reconciliation by being committed to Operation 12 Souls 2023. All our services are to empower you to the realms of possibilities, endeavor to attend all, and do not forget to share the testimonies of the great acts of God in this mountain. Invite your hearers to all our services. Hallelujah. If you're happy with those announcements, please put your hands together for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. It is now time to bring out our offering, our tithe, but be, uh, as before we do that, let's observe scripture from the book of James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. The Bible says, But ye be doers of the word, and not hearers only, 
deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, a, no, a, a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a class. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgetteth the manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh unto the perfect law of liberty, and continued therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us that we must be doers of the word of God. Even in our giving our tithe and hovering, the word of God tells us we should pay our tithe. So we must be doers of that commandment. And also bring our offering unto the Lord. Let's not be hearers only, but doers of the same. Let us know what the Bible says about giving towards the kingdom of God. We must know why we are giving towards the kingdom of God. We are giving, our, are paying our tithes and giving our offering because God has commanded us to advance his kingdom. And as we advance his kingdom, he will also advance our lives in every area of our desires. Paying our tithes and giving our offering to God is doing a good thing. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 16, that it pleases God. Hebrews 13, 15, the Bible says, 13, 16 says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. So when we bring our, our, our offering, when we pay our tithe, it is a pleasing, it pleases God. So let's always obey the commandments of our God by paying our tithes and giving our offering. Hallelujah. Anybody paying this or a tithe, please come forward if you are there. If you are paying your tithe this evening, please come forward. Hallelujah. Kindly lift it up and pray of it. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for these ones who have obeyed your word, they have heard your word, and they are doing your word. You have said in your word, we must not only be hearers, but doers of your word. They have obeyed the commandment that we should pay our tithe to your kingdom. Father, we thank you for their lives. We pray for that you preserve the 90%, bless the works of their hands, bless their families, keep them, keep the 90% to be of benefit to their lives and to their families. Father, we thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please drop your tithe and go back. And as many as have their free will offering, please lift it up, wave it up for the Lord, and pray over it. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to come into your presence, to bring our substance and your kingdom, to do as you have commanded us. Cause us not only to be hearers, but to be doers of your commandments. And as we do that, Father, advance your kingdom and also advance our lives. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for Jesus as the choir comes to lead us in a number. You are God. You are not just big old. You are not just large old. You are a great God. You are the Lord. You are not just big old. You are not just large old. Wow. Hallelujah. Big, big. Large, 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 large. You are great, 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 great. You are a great God. You are big, big, big God. Big, 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 big. big. Large, large. Just be 
door You are not just a joke You are a great God You are the Lord God Lift up our voice as we magnify the Lord. He is the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high God. You are the king of kings. You are the great I am. Open your mouth. If you are not full of yourself and you're conscious of God that you came to meet with, honor him. Father, thank you. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Lord, because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, you are the light of our lives. You are our voice. You are our strength. You are our guide. You are our comfort. We worship you because of who you are in our life. You are reliable. You are dependable. You are true to your word. We worship you because of who you are. We have come to fellowship with you tonight. Lord, give each and every one of us a lasting encounter in your presence. Cause every heart that is present, both actual and online, to have a personal testimony of this service in their lives. Lord, let the grace at work upon the sent man in this house speak even in my life in this service. Let everyone that have come with a heart full of expectation live this service with their desires in their hands. Do it to the glory of your name, O God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you excited being here tonight? Are you sure you're glad that you're part of this service? Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Make it bigger and make it louder. Amen. Glory. 
Glory to Jesus. I count it a great joy tonight given to me by God and the leadership of this ministry who isn't in-house right now but on a mission to take tonight's service. And I want to assure each and every one of us that you will encounter with your maker. Amen. The word that is meant for you that you have asked for before you came to this service, God will deliver it into your hearts in Jesus' name. If that sounds like what you are believing, go the Lord. <laughs> Nimrod, please assist me and give me the proper setting for this. Hallelujah. Please, you can have your seats comfortably in God's presence. Prophetically, the theme of this month is declared, my laughter is here, all shall laugh with me. All will not laugh at me, but all will laugh with me. And I don't know about you, but this has been the experience since this month began. God has been giving me occasion to laugh. And I know if this microphone is given to everyone that is in this service, you will point at something that God has done and perhaps had led to laughter in your life. Before I go straight to the topic tonight, I would like to sincerely appreciate every one of you that have celebrated me and are still celebrated, celebrating me since I turned 50. May the Lord God of heaven reward you. The shout of joy shall never depart from your habitation. I love you dearly and I celebrate all of you. Praise the Lord. Having ended our prophetic fast of the seventh month, we are now beginning our journey to the teaching guideline for this month, even our season of laughter. So tonight we'll be looking at the topic, what is praise? What is praise? Before we go deeper into that topic, I would like to say something. That the Bible is full of promises of God for the believer. There is nothing you desire to see in your life. There is no change you are anticipating. There is no breakthrough you desire at a particular area of your life that isn't part of the promises of God for our lives. The Bible is full of promises of God for the believer. But I've come to realize in as much as there are promises of God for the believer in the Bible, each of these promises are guided by laws. God didn't leave the promises naked. Allow me to use that word. He didn't leave the promises without certain restriction. It is full of promises, but each of the promises are guided by laws. Why are these promises guided by laws? God has promised to lift you, but that promise is guided by law. God has promised to heal you, but that promise is guided by law. God has promised that you will be fruitful. That promise is guided by law. He has promised you, he will establish you. There is none of these promises that is left without a law. Every of the promises of God for you as a child of God is guided by law. And while I was preparing, I realized that the purpose of these laws that are guiding the promises are to bring the believer to a place of intimacy with God. God will want to have you first before the reward. The purpose of the guiding laws to the promises is to make sure as a child of God, you are brought into a place of deeper relationship with God. It is to make sure you are brought to a place of intimacy with God. And thereafter, the promises will begin to reflect in your life effortlessly. You can't be in a place of deep walk with God and struggle to reflect the promises of God. The reason why as a child of God you are still struggling or there are certain aspects of your life that looks as if the promises of God are not real. Please check your life. God will want to have you. God will want to have me 
in a place of solid work, solid relationship. God would like to have you in the place of prayer, not because there is something you want him to do for you. God will want you to, to have you in the place of service, not because there is anything, as it were, that you want God to do for you. God will want to have you in the place of worship, not because there is anything you want God to do for you. Remember I began by saying that the Bible is full of promises of God. But God said, look, if I leave these promises without a guiding law, when they lay hold on the promises, I will not find them to relate with them. I will not find them to fellowship with them. When I eventually establish them in their place of affluence, in their place of peace, in their place of plenty, I may not find them to relate with them. Amen. Sometimes you look at what God has already blessed you with and they become an excuse why you can no longer meet with God. You look at the peace and the comfort that God has given you and it becomes the reason why you can no longer be found on the altar of prayer. You give reasons to why you can't, God cannot find you. When God lost it with the first man, he changed the syllables. When the first man found the fruit and ate it, the fruit that he was not meant to touch, and when God came in the cool of the day for fellowship, the Bible says the man had the voice of God and he ran and he hid himself. He was no longer available. And when God asked him, Adam, where are thou? He said, I heard your voice. He began giving excuses. I heard your voice and I've hid myself. God allowed this guiding load. So that it can pull you, it can pull me, and bring us in the place of intimacy with God. And thereafter, the promises, the blessings, your life effortlessly will begin to reflect the promises. You can't romance God on the altar of prayer and not carry his aura to your business. You can't have a solid time. You say, wherever two or three are gathered in my name. As we are, God is here. We are more than two. We are more than three. We can have a fellowship with him. I want you to imagine a man that is just coming out from a meeting. He has gone to the state house and he's coming out from a meeting with the sitting president. Definitely his countenance, even if what he's looking for has not been given to him, the fact that he accessed the state house, the fact that he had one-on-one -on -one with the president, the fact that contacts were exchanged, there's a way he will carry himself. There's a way he will talk. There's a way he will look. People will even like to associate with him, not because he has gotten what he went for, but because he has already gained access to the president. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Friends, we don't have to run helter skelter. The things that we are running for are meant to run after us. If we can run to God in the place of fellowship, if we can run to God in the place of worship, God will make sure he download everything, all the promises, all the promises, because at that time he will be convinced that he has found you and it will not be difficult for him to give you what he has created that is meant for you. I want you to lift up your hand and talk to God that Lord, what you have blessed me with will not separate me, will not be a hindrance to my fellowship, to my work with you. Whatever I count as a blessing, whatever I count as an achievement, is it the children that God has blessed us with? Will that come in between our fellowship with God? Is it the business that God has opened? Will that be a hindrance? Will that limit our relationship with God? What have you, oh, that you have not received from God? God is looking for us in the place of fellowship so that he can fill us with certain virtues so that the promises of God for our lives can be a reality. He's asking, where are thou? 
permit me to say there are names tonight that God is asking, where are thou? You may not be actual in the service, but are you online? He's asking, where are thou? This could be that night that he has been waiting for to lavish on you. Oh, is it the television that God has blessed you with? Because there's a particular program you must watch on Thursday and you began giving excuses. Nothing will separate us. Paul the apostle asked, what shall separate us from the love of God? What is it? Is it the money in our bank account? Is it what we have on our emissary? Is it the balance on our empesa that you kept looking at it from 4 p.m. and you were so excited? You will exit and you click again and the joy was too much and you say, ah, since this thing I've already, I've seen the alert, what am I going to church to do? The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. What God has prepared, what God has prepared. God does not give what he has prepared to passerbys. He gives what he has prepared to those that love him, to those that are in intimacy with God. God allowed the guiding laws to these promises because God does not start life with reward. I will still touch on our topic tonight. But I feel I should prepare our heart. God allowed the guiding laws to the promises so that because God does not begin life with reward. God begins life with a walk. W-A-L-K. There must be a walk between you and God. You must have a walk. He said to Abraham, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. God begins life with a walk. A walk of salvation. A walk of perfection. God begins life with a walk. W-O-R-K. You must walk the walk of him that sent you while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. It is after you have walked with God. It is after you have walked and you are still walking the walk of him that sent you, then comes the reward. God does not begin life with reward. God begins life with walk. He said in the book of Job chapter 36 verse 11, he said, and if thou shalt obey and serve the Lord your God, that is a walk. Then you will spend your days in prosperity. You have been praying, Lord, prosper me. Prosper my business. Oh, lift my business. Establish my business. God says, that is what I have done over 2,000 years ago. But can I find you? Can I walk with you? Can you walk for me? Can you steward my agenda? Will you be there for me? Can I count on you? He said, if you will obey and steward my agenda and be available for me, then you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Tell your neighbor, God does not begin life with reward. God begins life with work, then work, then reward. Jesus came to him in the book of John chapter 17. After he has walked, he said, the work that you sent me to do, I have done. I have witnessed you to the lost souls. I have preached you to the confused. I have pointed you to everyone that I came into contact with. I have walked the work that you sent me to do. And thereafter, the reward came. It is my prayer that we will steward the work that God brought us here on earth for. We will not be distracted and focus, shift our focus from the major to the minor. Listen to me. God will mark you and I based on how we handle the major, not the minor. The major is to walk the walk of him that send us while it is day. For the night is drawing closer than we ever imagined. It is my prayer that none of us will be found wanting in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we will not be found wanting. Lord, touch our hearts that we will desire yet the more to see what your agenda. You say, as the Father have sent Jesus, so have you also sent us. 
that will pay attention, will bring ourselves to the place of walk, walk, and thereafter we will not struggle to see the promises of God expressed in our lives. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I don't know whether this short exaltation have drawn our heart. You know, we are coming from our places of work. Yeah, there are so many things you had. The only thing you're waiting for is to hear, you are blessed. You will buy a car. You will marry. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now we can move to our topic. The few minutes remaining is more than enough. Even if I didn't say much, I thank God because something has dropped in our spirit. What is praise? What is praise? God's servant Bishop Oyedepo said something very profound. He said the result you obtain out of any venture is based on the function of your level of understanding. Before you conclude that something is not working in your hand, try and find out whether you have understanding of that thing, especially women. You have bought a new phone, you didn't sit down to go through the manual to see how that phone functions, some of the features on the phone. After some days, you say, no, I think I'll go back to my old phone. How many of you have had this experience? I've had it before. Praise the Lord. You kept on holding on the old phone that, no, if I want to do ABCD, this old phone is functioning faster. This new one is not working. Before you conclude, you come to a conclusion that you have praised God, eh? that no one have danced in the church like you, that no one have sung in the church like you, that you have been in choir for many years. You've been praising God and you haven't seen anything. Please, first of all, check your level of understanding of what praise is. Before you hands off on anything, find out whether you have first hand understanding on that thing. This also is applicable in our relationships. Before you give up relating with someone, Ask yourself, have I really understood this person? As a man, before you conclude that I'm tired of this woman, what do I need to do that I've not done for her? Find out that aspect of life, whether you have really understood her before you draw conclusion. The Bible admonishes us, as, as simple as we may claim praise is, that we should praise with understanding. In the book of Psalms, chapter 47, and verse number 7. Psalms 47, and verse number 47. If you're there, let's read it together. That's what brought us. Tell your neighbor, do you have your Bible? Make sure you read your Bible. Psalms, chapter 47, and verse Seven, if you're there, everyone, let's read together. One, two, go. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. What does it entail? It implies singing praises without understanding does not guarantee reward or result. As simple, we may look at it that is it not just dancing? Does dancing have formula? Is it not just singing songs? What is so important about it? If the Bible is drawing our attention to it, it means it is very important. It says, sing ye praises with understanding. So we are here to know what praise is. So that when we begin to sing praises to God, we will sing praises with understanding. You won't be watching other people as if you are a spectator. You know, there are people in church during praise and worship, they just turn. They will turn. See the way Mama Wole is, is, is dancing. Some are even online. See the way she's doing as if she's a small child. I'm doing like I'm a small child because I have understanding. You that is watching that I'm doing like a small child is because you don't have understanding. If you have understanding, age cannot come in between you and God when it is time to praise. You won't say that ah, praise and worship is for young, young people <laughs> in the church. You look at people like Deontay, people like Chow, that this is for them. If you have understanding, even when you are aged and you have a stick in your hand and you hear the songs of praise because of the understanding you have of what praise is, even if you won't move, you'll be turning, you'll be turning, you'll be turning. I had a testimony over the late mother to Pastor Lydia Abraham. 
she, a sound woman, even at old age, I'm told that while she was alive, hymns are on her head. When you visit her, I don't know this one, say, that the gospel of Jesus is what we are following. She will sing the whole of that song without a book in her hand. You can't visit her before you leave, before you depart. Her sons, her daughters that have come to visit with friends, she must make sure that songs of praises are sung before God. At all age, she could not even, you know, recognize people well, but she could still understand what, she had understanding of what praise is. I believe by, at the end of this month, I'll be one of the police in this church, me and Pastor Jones. We'll be checking those people that are standing when they're leading praise and say, this is for God deeper. There is nothing like God deeper here. Are we together? That this is Brother Combo. When God's blessings arrive, you can't be pointing fingers that this is for Mrs. Jones or this is for Combo. You would like to be in the forefront to collect. So when you have understanding of what praise is, you don't bother who is beside you. You don't bother about age. You will give it your best because you know what you stand to gain. Praise the Lord. So quickly, what is praise? I got this definition today while I was preparing. Praise is God's purpose for your existence here on earth. Praise is God's purpose for your existence and for my existence here on earth. Wow, this is deep. <laughs> so you are not living, you are not here on earth for yourself. I'm not here for myself. The purpose of my being here and the purpose of your being here is that you should praise God. So praise is your purpose. Amen. God's purpose for you, for your existence here on earth. And I'll give you scriptural backing. A time came, the Bible tells us that Hezekiah was sick unto death. And then God sent an angel to Hezekiah and told Hezekiah that prepare your house. Isaiah chapter 38. Let's open to Isaiah chapter 38. He said, put your house in order for thou will surely die. In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death and Isaiah the prophet, sorry that it was a prophet, a slip of tongue, I see an angel. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Tell your neighbor that was a death sentence. When you receive a death sentence from people of your community, you will run to God and say, Lord, see what they have said. Vindicate me. Have mercy on me. Deliver me. But what happens when a man receives a death sentence from God? Who will you run to? The only route of escape when a death sentence is received from God is the record of your walk of praise before God that will vindicate you. He said, God said to him, let him put his house in order for he will die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord. I say, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept. While I was reading, I realized, among other things, one of the notable things that Hezekiah did that was good in the sight of God is that Hezekiah was a praiser of God. He said, I've done what is good in your sight. Let me jump to verse, uh, okay, what is good in your sight? Then the next verse says what? Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, go and say to Hezekiah, that says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. 
Wow. So what was that good thing that Hezekiah did that warranted God to immediately return the prophet to Hezekiah and say to Hezekiah that I am adding to you 15 more years? What is it that Hezekiah did that someone else cannot do that God should just allow Hezekiah to go? While I was preparing, it dawned on me. Maybe God checked through the record of Hezekiah after he, as Hezekiah was praying. And he tried to look, who can I replace Hezekiah to? How does Hezekiah praise me? Is there anyone that have this kind of record? Do I have people that have understood praise that can praise me the way Hezekiah have been praising me? For God to have sent the prophet immediately to go back to Hezekiah and say to Hezekiah, I'm adding to you 15 more years. It means the way Hezekiah managed or the way Hezekiah understood praise. I am centering on praise tonight because of the teaching. The way Hezekiah understood praise was so distinct from other people. The Bible says, while, look at one of the things Hezekiah was lamenting while he was praying. Verse 10, he said, I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residues of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pinning sickness from day even to night. Will thou make an end of me? Verse 13, I reckon till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. So he kept on talking in the place of prayer. And then verse 18, he said, for the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Verse 19, together everyone. The living, the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, after the children shall make known. What am I pointing at? Hezekiah was a man that lived to purpose, to fulfill the purpose of God for his existence. That means he was a praiser of God. This scripture confirms to us that if you are not a praiser of God, you are not fulfilling purpose. Any day you wake up and you fail to praise God, you have abused purpose. Because praise is God's purpose for your existence here on earth. So we have to do it daily, just like we eat food daily. You must be a praiser of God. If you'll be a praiser of God, if I'll be a praiser of God, we have to be careful not to give room to murmuring. Anytime the spirit of murmuring wants to wear you, it wants to abuse the purpose of your existence. Give that spirit no room. If you are not a praiser of God, you are not living. You are merely existing. Hezekiah said, the living, he said, the living only shall praise thee. People of God, praise is God's purpose for your existence. In the book of Isaiah 43 and verse 21. He said, these people have I formed for myself and they shall show forth my praises. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praises. Can you see that? To show forth the praises of God because that is what he created you for. So anytime we are praising God, we are fulfilling our purpose for being here on earth. And anytime we fail to praise God, we are abusing our purpose of being here on earth. Hezekiah knew how active he was in the fulfillment of his purpose of being on earth. So when he was told that put your house in order, he will die. He said, who will praise God? I have been actively involved. I have been a praiser of God. While alive, I've been praising God. I have not abused the purpose of my existence. So Lord, where am I going? When you know what praise is, 
you will live a praiseful life to an extent that when anything challenges you like Hezekiah, you will turn your face to the wall and say, Lord, who will praise you at 12 midnight? If you allow this high blood pressure to sneak life out of me, who will praise you at 6 a.m.? Lord, I know there are many voices that praises you, but you know my voice is unique. If you allow this cancer to spread and lead me to an early grave, who will praise you? And God said, seriously? This woman have lived to fulfill purpose. Amen. I have always heard her singing. Not the one we sing to abuse. <laughs> Remember God's servant sharing with us when a woman have asked that this week, this is the least, this is what I want to do. And your husband says that, uh, you know, the payment I was expecting is not ready. Then you, you walk around the sitting room. Yes, Jesus loves me. <laughs> yes, Jesus. That is not the praise that we are talking about. At that time, you are not fulfilling purpose. You are indirectly telling someone, if you refuse to do it, know that Jesus loves me. Mm. And then there is another song that says, uh, uh, your father will forsake you, your husband will forsake you. Choir, will you remind me that song? <laughs> That but God will never forsake me. Those were not the kind of praises that Ezekiah was singing. Yes, there were songs of praises that were birthed from the place of understanding. Amen. No wonder he was bold to ask God, will the dead praise you? Listen, I asked myself a question. Have I praised God to the extent that when I'm faced with a particular issue, I will stand and tell God, Lord, if you allow this happen, how will you be able to hear praises from me? When sometimes in the church, in the Pentecostal setup, we have looked at the time of praise as, please check online, uh, is the praise and worship still on? And then the child tells the mother, yes, who is even leading praise today is Esther. I know she'll say, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. That one that always say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I will be there later. Oh, my God. That is an abuse of purpose. <laughs> I'm going deeper. <laughs> Praise is God's purpose for our existence here on earth. He said, these people have I formed. These people have I formed. Can God be proud of you and I that we are his praisers? God, one thing God cannot do for himself is to praise himself. So he formed you for that purpose so that we can praise him. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, also confirming that praise is God's purpose for our existence here on earth. First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Look at all the CV. A peculiar people. That ye should show forth. Don't mistake your peculiarity for yourself. Our attention is being drawn. The reason why I made you peculiar is that there is an assignment ahead. Amen. That you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. When you dress and you look beautiful, praise him. He said that you may show forth the praises of him that have called you. In everything that you do, let the praises of God be shown forth. That way you will fulfill the purpose of your existence here on earth. To show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness. What would have happened if you had remained in the dark? The peculiarity, the beauty, the affluence, the glamour that is in you wouldn't have been traced. So God brought you and I out. He chose you. When you say something is chosen, that means amidst the multitude, one was preferred. Amen. 
Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth. Tell your neighbor, show forth. You have shown forth your cut work. It is time to show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I love the next verse, verse 10. He say, who in time past were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Are you now convinced that praise is, the, is God's purpose for our existence here on earth. Show forth his praises. The Lord, you, you, you just wake up. What are you dancing? You are dancing. If you see what, I, what I've been doing since I turned 50, it's not a joke. Amen. It's not a joke. I will dance. When I sit small, one song will just, I remember, I will start singing. Amen. Someone that does not understand will say, I even told them yesterday during the midday, before I came, I was feeling, I said, Lord, you know, God factor is me. It must be God at the center of everything. Yeah. I said, I don't want to, like I am over projecting myself. Then I had a voice. I know it was the Holy Spirit. There is nothing wrong celebrating life. 50 years is not five days. Yeah. I know how many times death came. But God snatched me from the hands of dead. I know how many times the devil whispered to my ears that who told you? You will clock 50. So showing forth his praises. I'm sure my daughter must have wondered that day as if I was mad. I will dance. I will go to the room. I will come back. I was just dancing, singing songs, laughing. I am still dancing. Praise the Lord. I've seen people that engage on about 50 days of praise to God just to mark their feet, just praising God. Living to fulfill the purpose of God for our existence. So when the devil hire our mind and we are murmuring, we are bitter, that is an abuse of purpose. He has no right to hire you. He has no right to hire your mind. And you go an entire day and praises have not proceeded from you. The Bible says, who in time past, you were not a people. That means you were nobody. And then God walked in. Out of the multitude, God chose you. You that was nobody. He handpicked. He looked at the crowd. He looked at the multitude and he said, no, I choose Pastor Jones. I choose Pastor Judy. He said, I am choosing you and making you peculiar so that you can live to fulfill the purpose of my decision. And that purpose is to show forth my praises. In our businesses, show forth his praises. In our dressing, show forth his praises. Let me digress a bit. Anytime we dress like the other side, you understand? It's abuse of purpose. He said, I have called them and I've made them peculiar people that they should show forth the praises of him. In our relationship, show forth his praises. Of him that called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. How many of you know we are the light of the world? So if we are the light of the world, we must do as the scripture dictates. Which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy, but had now obtained mercy. I will stop there. I have more, but will continue by the grace of God on Sunday. The most important thing, or whenever I'm opportune again, to, to, to continue with the topic. I don't want to say many things. I want us to go home with this one word. So that even in your sleep, when you're woken up and ask, what is praise? Hmm? Let me see. Go deeper. What is praise? Based on tonight's teaching, what is praise? Go deeper. Okay, you have tried. Sister, what's your name? Though? Sheila, based on the teaching received tonight, what is praise? Good. Who else? 
else on this side, choir side. Yes, Alan, what is praise? God's purpose for my existence. So I am not living for myself. I am living for God. I am living to offer praises to God. Let's rise to our feet. Hallelujah. We will praise God because it's part of what we are living for. So there's no how. Most of our services throughout this month will be ending them with high praise. So I will see how many people really want to fulfill the purpose of their existence. <laughs> Whether they will stand and say, it's yai, 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 yai. <laughs> Online, I hope you are ready wherever you are. Create a space. Don't say uh, you are not actual. Oh, after all, I'm not in the service. I'm at home. Create a space where you are. If you can't stand, move your body. Is the fulfillment. Praise is the fulfillment of the God's purpose for our existence here on earth. Only the living shall praise God. Hezekiah said, Lord, look at my record. I have been a praiser. So where are the residue of my years? That means God was so sure if he added the 15 years. It doesn't matter what comes my way, the greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus, I'm born a winner, more than victorious, I'm a head of his kingdom, filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Praises tonight. Receive our praises tonight. Receive our praises tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have praised Him. Hallelujah. As simple as it may sound or it may look, what we've done in this few minutes, we have fulfilled purpose. So as we open our eyes first thing in the morning, we should remind ourselves the purpose for our existence that day. Give God praise, no matter how short it may be. After you have prayed, after you've lifted your voice, just give him praise. Give him praise and you will see how you will function that day. As the teaching continues, we begin to see what we stand to enjoy. We will learn what praise is deeper so that nothing, no situation will deny us the opportunity to offer praises to God. Praise and worship will become our way of life. We will not wait for the choir to motivate us. We will not wait for someone to hold microphone in the church before we sing. Whether we have the right key or we don't have the right key, we make sure we are fulfilling purpose for our existence. You, you wonder why God had to step down to where Paul and Silas what was. And he lost them because he knew that even at midnight, at the state they were, they didn't allow the prison chains and the prison doors to deny them to live and fulfill purpose. They began singing praises to God. And they were hard. And when they were hard, the doors were open. It's like God said, who is it that have tied these people even at the state they are, they could still praise me. They could still fulfill purpose. They were not complaining. Sometimes something small will just happen like this. Then God becomes the punching back. Why should I praise God? Where were you, God, when this was happening? God said, I'm there. That it has happened does not change my programs for your life. That it has happened, it doesn't change my mind. It doesn't change what I've planned for you. If you can still fulfill purpose, I am ever reliable and dependable. I will do my part. May the Lord God of heaven bless you. May this word we have received, I pray that we will run with it. I'm not saying we've not been praising God before, but I know we'll do it with more understanding. And as we do, let the blessings that are attached to praise find practical expression in our lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just like you heard on the announcement, it's a countdown to the Woman Arise Convention. Please make sure you share the flyer. Invite your friends. Let's keep on inviting. Praise the Lord. It promises to be great, great, great. As you can see, the atmosphere is already getting charged for what God is set to do in our midst. And as we close tonight, invite someone for Sunday service. Start inviting tonight. Remember tomorrow when you have your phone, remind the person. Do I need to send you transport? I would like to see you in church on Sunday. Remember, the blessings or the promises of God for you and I, they are guided by laws. And God allowed them so that he can bring us to the place of deeper work with them. And then thereafter, we we'll begin to experience the reward. I bring you greetings. Sorry, I didn't mention it early from God's servant. He said, I should greet you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't want to assume there may be one or two people that are not born again. And maybe they are online. 
or they are actual before we share the goodness you are in this service you are not saved father let, please repeat this prayer with me lord jesus i come before you today as a sinner because i know i cannot save myself I recognize the work wrought on the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. And today, by faith, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior, even as I renounce the devil and all his acts in my life. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me my sins. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. A congratulations. In case you pray this prayer, the details on the, the, the displayed our contact, feel free and call. And if you are not near around Mombasa, uh, there are county stations where our churches are. You can easily walk in there. And in case you are not still around those counties, I know wherever you are, there are Bible-believing churches there. Take yourself there so that you can begin this sweet journey and you will have no occasion to regret. For the rest of us, again, let's lift up our hands as we appreciate God. That, Lord, you have spoken to my heart tonight. I will praise you with understanding. I will praise you with understanding. I will live daily to fulfill my purpose of existence here on earth, which is to praise you among other things. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. As you go tonight, I pray that the hand of God go with each and every one of us. Whatever you left at home unattended, just because you, you propose in your heart that you must attend this service, the God that you honored will attend to them for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Even if it is something that has to do with deadline, God will make it up for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's share the goodness together in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. The Lord God is our son and our shield. He will give us grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from us as we walk uprightly. We are restored to power, to dominion, to honor, and to dignity. Amen. Great God of all possibilities, my eyes are on you. Shame, reproach, and mockery shall be far from my tabernacle. With my faith in place, nothing is too hard for God. No more limitation and defeat. In 2023, I am an emblem of the triumph of faith. Amen. We want to hear. Yay!